Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to discuss how to write an expression for a real-world situation in which one of the values is unknown and represented with a variable. This is the first step in learning how to write an equation for a real-world situation. For example, suppose that we're told a person travels by train and car, and the average speed of the train ride is 60 miles per hour, while the average speed of the car ride is 45 miles per hour. We know that the entire trip lasted for five hours. If we let x represent the number of hours that the car ride lasted, how could we write an expression for the total distance? The first thing to keep in mind is that whenever we're talking about speeds of cars and trains and traveling and miles per hour and that sort of thing, we're going to be using the formula distance equals rate times time, or d equals r times t. In this case, the distance that a person travels by train is going to be equal to the rate, or average speed of the train, times the amount of time that the person was on the train. Similarly, for the car. Always make sure to note what your variable represents. In this case, x is the time of the car ride. If x is the time in the car, then let's go ahead and first use the distance formula, distance equals rate times time, to write an expression for the distance that the person traveled in the car. The distance in the car is equal to the rate, which we're told the speed of the car ride was 45 miles per hour, so the rate is 45. The distance in the car is 45 miles per hour times the number of hours, or the time in the car, x. For example, if we travel at 45 miles per hour for 10 hours, we're going to go 450 miles. Now let's talk about writing an expression for the distance traveled in the train. Since the average speed of the train ride was 60 miles per hour, the rate is 60. Now, this is the tricky part. We weren't told a variable to use for the train ride. And we generally don't want to use more than one variable, because remember, our goal is to eventually be able to set up equations to solve. We can only solve the equation if it has one variable. So what do we know about the train ride that relates to the time in the car? Well, what we know that ties the two together is the time for the entire trip. The entire trip lasted for five hours. We know that we spent x hours in the car. So, the time for the train is going to be five hours, the total number of hours, minus the amount that we spent in the car. If we were in the car for two hours, that would leave three for the train. If we were in the car for four hours, that would only leave one for the train, and so on. But we don't know how long we were actually in the car. We call that x, x hours. So to finish our expression for the distance in the train, we're going to have 60 times 5 minus x. A common error would be to write x minus 5, but remember, 5 is the total hours. This is the larger amount of time, so we need to subtract x from 5. Now, let's answer the question that was asked. We were asked to write an expression for the total distance. That means that we need the distance in the car plus the distance on the train. The distance in the car was 45x. The distance on the train is 60 times 5 minus x. We need to add these two together to get the total distance. We should always simplify if possible. In this case, simplifying would mean distributing 60 through the parentheses and combining like terms. This gives us 45x plus 60 times 5, which is 300, minus 60 times x. Now, 45x and 60x are like terms. We can combine them. We know this because it has exactly the same variable. This means that we have 45 minus 60 is negative 15x. So 300 minus 15x. This is an expression representing the total distance. I hope this video was helpful to you. If so, please remember to like it. And also remember that I do take requests. You can always leave your questions in the comments below.